Alright, so every step we're going to treat everyone, even though I know that the square root of 36 is 6. That is super easy because I know 6 squared, right? Nope, 6 times 6 is 36. But I want you to practice. Ladies! I want you to practice uh, breaking it down. Okay? So, I'm going to break it down always using the same number. Okay? And then I'll just slowly break it down, always with my prime factors. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and yep, so no, on. Not in here. Okay. So two is my first number. It's even, so I know two goes into it. Okay. So two goes into three one time with one left over. And if you notice, I'll change this color. And so that'll tell me, oh, 2 goes into 16 now, right? Okay, so this is short division. It's a little different. I made it up, but I find it to be very helpful. Okay? So then I say, well, can 2 go into that one? And I'll change my color again. And the reason I change my color is so that I can go, um, in case I have to carry another 1 or carry a 2 or anything like that. And it, it just... It's easier to see when they're different colors. But in this case, it's just 2 times 9 is 18. So now I can keep with the same color because they're single digits. 2 will not go into 9, but 3 does, right? So then I do 3 times what is 9? It's 3. Then I say, well, what goes into 3? 3, one time. When you get to 1, you're done, okay? And now we just pick out our pairs. So I have a pair of 2s. So I take one of them out. Every time you circle a pair, you pull it out. I circle the pair, I pull it out. And those are multiplied against each other. There's nothing not circled, so there's nothing left in the radical. So it's just 2 times 3, which is 6. And so the way we're going to do this, right, is you're going to show me this step. You're going to go definition of prime, we can call it PF, right? But it's prime factorization. That, that's something you have to know on that state test. So to be able to say it, you need to write it down a couple of times so you know what it means. And then you can just call it the definition of PF. Because you're going to do it so many times. It's ridiculous, right? Then our next step was this purple step, so we're just going to change the color to black. And we're going to go. Then we did the two times three, which is just simplifying, right? And some might even call that distribution because it's multiplication, right? So either way works, and we're good to go. And that's your steps, okay? So let's look at fourteen. Very similar. Now, 14 is not a perfect square, right? Because it's between 25 and, uh, and 6, or 36, right? And we'll talk about that later on how to estimate without a calculator, okay? But right now, we're just going to break it down to get the real number. So, what's the number we start with? Two. Good. 28 divided by 2. Okay, the so 2 goes into 2 once with nothing left over. 2 goes into 8 uh, 4 times. So we got 14. And then I know that 2 goes into there 7 times and then 7 goes in there once. So I don't really need to change the color because the numbers weren't that high. Okay? But do I have a pair? I do. And the pair is 2. Now what's left in the box is whatever isn't circled. So in this case, 7. Okay? <clears throat> now, what's going on here? What are the steps? This first step, obviously this is given, right? And then we broke it down using that definition yeah. of prime factorization, right? And then our last step in the green was... Um, 
We should call that something, huh? When we pull things out. We could call that radical simplification. Radical simplification. Okay? So all you're doing is simplifying the radical, in other words. Right? So radical simplification or simplifying the radical. Okay? That's it. That's all you did. Two steps. Okay? A lot of work for two steps. <clears throat> All right, this one, a little more important, a little, little harder, right? So we got to worry about the 20 first. Can we break down the 20? So we take the 20 out here, we go like this, we go like this, and then we say, okay, how many times does 2 go into 20? 10. Does 2 go into 10? 5. Does 5 go into 5? Once. When you get to 1, you're done. So, we started with the black that was given. Okay? This is given. That's your stage one. Right? Stage two. And the red. That was... This is stage two. And that is basically the definition of prime factorization. Now, we need to do stage three, which is radical simplification, right? So I'm taking a circle and I'm saying, hey, I got two twos, so that's going to be one two out of the radical. Well, there's still a five left inside. And that is still multiplied by the nine. So all we did is we took this radical of the square root of 20 and we turned it into two square roots of five. Does that make sense? And that is that is stage three, which is radical simplification, or simplifying the radical, all right? Now it's really easy, guys. We're going to distribute or simplify, okay? So what is nine times two? Now, we only deal with multiplying things outside of the box with, with other things outside of the box. We can multiply things inside the box by other things that are inside the box. And what I mean by that is, if I have something in the radical, it can be multiplied by the radical. But if it's outside a radical, right? This is not in a radical, so it's only multiplying to the whatever is not in the radical. So 9 times 2 is 18, right? Square roots of 5. So all you're saying is you have, instead of 2 square roots of 5, now you have 18 of them. Okay? And that last step, step 4, and that's just distribution, and you can get away with calling it simplification if you want, okay? All right, last problem. You see they're getting gradually harder, okay? So I start you off with something very simple, and we work our way up to something, you know, not harder, just more tedious, that's all takes more steps. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to write it as 4, 4, 1, upside down division with my bar. Remembering that I have a given, and then I'm going to start with a different color. And can I use a 2 here? No. No. So 2 doesn't go into it because it's odd. Does 3 go into it? And how do I know? Huh? Does 3 go into 4, 4, 1? And how would we oh, yeah, know? Oh, because uh, that equals 9. Yes. 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9. And, and any time you add up the numbers, and it's a number divisible by 3, then that number is divisible by 3. Okay? So that's a good trick. We have tricks for 2, if they're even. Tricks for 3, they add up to be a number divisible by 3. Tricks for five, if it zero, ends in a zero or a five, right? So those are really good tricks to use. So I'm going to start with a three. And this is where I like different colors. Because I go, three goes into four once with one left over. And so that's where I'm getting this whole little 14 going on, right? Then I'll change the color again. I'll be like, three goes into 14 four times, right? Because four times three is 12. But 12 from 14 leaves me 2. So 
So I carry over a 2. So that last number is really 21. And so 3 goes into 21. How many times? Seven. Right? And then I can actually start off. Well, I might as well use a different number. I, I want to see different co or different colors. So does 3 go into this one? Does 3 go into 1 plus 4 plus 7? So what's 1 plus 4 plus 7? So 5 oh, plus 7, yeah. 12. 3 goes into 12, right? So it does work. All right, so how many times does 3 go into 14? Again, 4 times, right? But that's 12, so there's 2 left over. So I'm going to put a 2 up here, and I'm going to color in that 7, so I know it's 27 that I'm looking at, right? And so what's, what's 3 times what is 27? Yes, you got it. There it is. That's insane. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, because 3 times 8 is 24, and 1 more is 27, right? Now, does 3 go into 49? Do we recognize 49? What, is, what goes into 49? 7. Now, there is a trick for 7, but the trick for 7 is so complicated, I don't even teach it. Because it's like, you might as well just divide it by 7. Okay? So, but I already know 7 goes into 49 7 times, and 7 goes into 7 once. Right? So, here's the thing. In this case, now I'm going to write this out. Definition, right? Of prime factorization. Okay? And then the next step is square root. Simplification, right? So otherwise I'm simplifying the radical. Okay? And I do that by doing my circles. I, I circle all the pairs. And then I pull one out from it. So that's a three. And I pull one out from it. And that's a seven. And there's nothing left inside the box, right? So that's three times seven. And remember, we still have the eight to bring down, right? Because this is actually simplified to that. Okay? So, honestly, this is just 21 squared. Right? Alright, cool. So now we just do the multiplication. 21 times 8. And when I do 21 times 8, I think of what's, what's 2 times 8? 16. 16, yeah? And so 20 times 8 would be 160, right? And then 1 times 8 is 8, right? So I add the 2 up. So when I have 21 times 8, I'm really just doing 8 times 20, 160, plus 8, right? So I got 168. And that's my answer, and that is my simplification, or we call it distribution when it's uh, multiplication, right? So, let's call it distribution. Whenever you're distributing, okay? Well, actually, just one, but you do this first, then this times that, blah, 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 whatever. Okay. You know what we're doing, I hope. Questions. If you don't, this is the time to ask. Is it a lot of work? Yeah. All right, that's okay. Yeah, it makes sense. But it makes sense? Good.